Good evening. This is All India Radio Kohima. I'm Jonas Yantan with evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Bangladesh PM Sheikh Hasina exchanges seven MOUs in bilateral talks held in New Delhi. Parat Biotech's COVID-19 recombinant nasal vaccine receives approval for restricted use. Boxer Code sentences 76-year-old man in Peck to 20 years imprisonment. An NBSC says it is mandatory for all registered institutions under it to observe Swachata Pakwara. Now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina today jointly unveiled Unit 1 of the Maitri Super Thermal Power Project following bilateral and delegation level talks in Delhi. The project is being constructed under India's concessional financing scheme. It will add 1,320 megawatts to Bangladesh's national grid. Issues related to connectivity, energy, water resources, trade and investment, border management and security were on the agenda of the talks. Seven agreements including water resources, railways, science and technology, space technology were exchanged following the talks. This includes an MOU between Prasa Parati and Bangladesh Television on cooperation in the field of broadcasting. In his press statement, Prime Minister Modi announced that an important agreement on water sharing has been signed today. He expressed confidence that India and Bangladesh ties will touch new heights. He said that across Asia, India is the biggest market for exports from Bangladesh. To further expedite this progress, India will soon initiate discussions on a bilateral economic comprehensive partnership agreement. Modi stated that India and Bangladesh have decided to increase cooperation in sectors like IT, space and nuclear energy. Speaking on the occasion, Bangladesh Prime Minister appreciated Modi's visionary leadership, saying that it continues to provide added momentum to bilateral relations. She added that India-Bangladesh bilateral relations are known to be role model for neighbourhood diplomacy. India's first intranasal COVID vaccine developed by Parat Biotech has received approval for restricted use in emergency situation among people aged above 18 years. In a tweet, Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Mansuk Mandavia has termed this feed as a big boost to India's fight against COVID-19. He informed that Parat Biotech's recombinant nasal vaccine has been approved by Central Drug Standard Control Organization for primary immunization against COVID-19 for above 18 years age group for restricted use in emergency situation. Dr. Mandavia also said that this step will further strengthen government's collective fight against the pandemic. He said under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, India has harnessed its science, research and development and human resources in the fight against COVID-19. The minister expressed hope that with a science-driven approach and efforts of all the country will defeat COVID-19. A special judge under Boxo Act 2012 has sentenced one person to 20 years rigorous imprisonment for committing sexual assault against a minor in Peck District. The special judge, Ms. Volda T. Terrier, while pronouncing the judgment today, observed that the accused was a 76-year-old retired armed branch sub-inspector whom the victim, aged five years, had considered him as grandfather. The judge said instead the accused committed an unforgivable act of committing rape and aggravated penetrative sexual assault on her. Terrier said the costly act does not permit to show leniency. Along with rigorous imprisonment, the accused has been subject to payment of fine, which is also liable to be immediately paid to the victim. The judgment further applauded the state government to grant 4 lakh rupees as victim compensation scheme sanctioned by Home Department Relief and Rehabilitation, Government of Nagaland, as interim relief to the victim. This news comes to you from All India Radio, Kohima. You can also listen to this news bulletin on News on Air app and YouTube channel AIA News Kohima. Nagaland Boro School Education NBSC said it is mandatory for all registered institutions under NBSC to observe the Swachata Pagwara 
which is being scheduled from September 1 to 15. The Swachada Pagwara is observed by Ministry of Education, Department of School Education and Literacy, New Delhi, since 2016 with the involvement of the schools, making it a successful mass movement. This year's observance is focused on awareness on COVID-19, the safety protocols and COVID-appropriate behaviour. In this regard, NBSC directed heads of institutions to take up the activities as per the suggested action plan provided to them and continued the activities related to cleanliness and hygiene on a consistent and sustainable basis by integrating it with a regular routine throughout the year. Further, the activities are to be conducted daily as per the action plan and the report along with photo must be emailed to Swachada Pagwara Nagalan at gmail.com each day. Advisor Water Resources Namri Chang, while loading medal winners from Beren District during the recently concluded second Nagalan Olympic and Paralympic Games 2022 said, despite poor infrastructure in the district, many sports enthusiasts had come up in the district. During a felicitation program organized by District Sports Council Beren in Beren today, the advisor also stressed on the importance of good habits, including diet, to maintain athletic health. Asembe Mbumcha, chef de mission, DSC, informed that Beren District won 8 gold, 5 silver and 13 bronze and stood in the fifth position in the medal tally. In Jumugidima District, Advisor Sericulture, Excise and Minority Affairs Ralia Rio appealed to sportspersons to practice mentally and physically and maintain consistency and discipline. He stated that this achievement is just a beginning under a new district and he is positive that with trained coaches and good players they will achieve greater heights. The district won one gold medal, 12 silver and 13 bronze medals during this year's State Olympic. MLA Ajedo Zimome also called upon individuals, sports officers and district officers to give support to sportspersons to let them progress in their field. Deputy Commissioner Zeminu Zase Gole has informed public to remove structures and materials along surveyed area proposed for road widening and expansion and development of the district administrative headquarter. In a notice, the DC said the move is being initiated as part of the ongoing developmental activities and furtherance to carry out widening of existing approach road to two-lane specification from road junction near Town Hall, Zemenu, towards Penda area. It is also to enable smooth road access for the purpose of facilitating expansion and development of the district administrative headquarter. Zase Golier has asked all concerned to clear and remove any materials or structures from the surveyed land area within 15 days, after which the road whitening exercise will commence and any person or group failing to take compliance will be doing so at their own risk. Deputy Speaker Nagalin Legislative Assembly T. Yangseo Sangdam today said that facilities concerning Gifre District Public Ground has been taken up to the concerned authorities and the matter will be expedited to promote sports in the district. He was addressing the closing ceremony of the 19th Mong Mong football tournament, which culminated in Kifre today. Yang So encouraged players to take up sports as a career by availing opportunities of various sports schemes launched by the government. He loaded the teams for displaying professionalism, discipline and keeping the spirit of brotherhood throughout the games. During the tournament, United Vikings lifted the trophy after defeating a bit FC by five goals to four goals. And now to end the news, here are the main points again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Bangladesh PM Sheikh Hasina exchanges seven MOUs in bilateral talks held in New Delhi. Parad Biotech's COVID-19 recompetent nasal vaccine receives approval for restricted use. Bokso court sentences 76-year-old man in peck to 20 years imprisonment. And NBSC says it is mandatory for all registered institutions under it to observe Swachada Pakwara. 
That is all we have in this evening news bulletin. Good night.